Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over my approach to the Circa Millions contest. And what that is, is an against the spread contest where thousands and thousands of people compete to see who does better against the spread in the NFL over the course of the season. Um, it is a pretty healthy buy-in, about a thousand dollars, and as the title of the contest implies, it will be, I imagine, a million for first, uh, at least, depending on how many people actually show up and register at the very end. You have to pick five teams per week, and there are certain kind of booby prizes as well. They, they, in addition to. Um, you know, the big win at the end of the season for the biggest overall score. They have uh, quarterly results where every, I think every five games or something like that, or every four weeks, I think every four weeks they, they pay out or every five weeks they pay out. Whoever does well over that period of time as well. They put the spreads up uh, Thursday and they don't change until the games lock. You have to put in, if you want to play the Thursday game, well, uh, you got to get it in as far as I'm concerned by 3 p.m. Thursday, Eastern time. All the other games have to be by Saturday, 2, 2 o'clock, because I have a proxy that puts in my wages for me since I'm not a Nevada resident, so I have to go onto their site and do that. And we're going to talk about how we're going to win this, and we're going to go over this every single week. And hopefully you're going to learn a little something about – well, maybe nothing about, definitely nothing about football. Uh, maybe nothing about how to beat the bookmaker. Maybe nothing about how to beat the spread. But throughout the course of this, you're certainly going to learn how to analyze people. You're going to learn how to analyze different structures. And we're going to have a lot of fun doing this. Now, there are, you have the ability to make several entries. I only made one. And each week we're going to see how we do and we're going to rate them in, a, in several ways. So here is the reality about betting the NFL and the reality about what this uh, contest is designed to teach, uh, designed to test. The NFL is the most, if not one of the most, one of the most, if not the most liquid market in the world when it comes to wagering. It takes in just a ton of money, a variety of, of, of sharp money, not sharp money, just lots and lots of money. And essentially, the more money and the more opinions that go into predicting anything, the more likely it is that they are reflecting what reality is. Let's put this another way. Let's take the uh, the Chiefs Lions game for example. The Chiefs are minus four point five over the Lions. There is a number out there that reflects what the Chiefs' chances are of covering the four and a half. Okay, the Chiefs have a certain percent chance of covering the four and a half. We don't know exactly what that is, right? If you told me what the odds are of a coin flipping heads or tails, I could tell you exactly what that is. If you asked me what the odds are of a coin flipping heads twice in a row, I could tell you exactly what that is. But if you ask me what the chances are of the Chiefs covering 4.5 points, I could not tell you what that is, but that number exists. Okay, In, in the world of uncertainty, there is a number out there that reflects what the odds are of that happening, is of that happening. Now, since we don't know exactly what that is, and we cannot research it and, and know that accurately mathematically, the closest thing we have to go on is what the what the 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 entire public wagering system has determined those chances to be. In other words, is we don't know exactly what the chances are of the Chiefs covering the four and a half. 
the best estimation of that is going to be derived from taking the sum of intelligence in the universe as it's reflected in these lines. Now, all this is, is, is a way of saying that the chances of the Chiefs covering the four and a half is approximately 50%. Okay. Now, sometimes it's a little bit higher, sometimes a little bit lower, and that depends on what the the public is pricing the vegan. In other words, um, like I'll pull in this this uh, this tab right here. This is the this is people are familiar with something that looks like this. This shows like different odds, and all these are pretty close to minus one ten. In other words, when it's minus one ten on each side, that means that that it's fifty percent on each side. So you might see like a couple of books have minus 115. So you might be able to say it's a little bit, you know, le more likely they're going to cover four and a half. But here on the other side, some books have it at the other side of minus 113. So since we don't know exactly what the odds are of them covering the four and a half are, you could look at the overall sum of the intelligence in the universe and you could determine that it's approximately 50% that the chiefs are going to come. Now, it is important to realize that that is reality, okay? It is theoretically impossible for me to improve upon that. In other words, for me to say that, oh, you know what, I think the chiefs have a 60% chance of covering the spread. That requires an incredible leap in one's ego that I'm, I think is foolish to make. Okay. Um, if you can, if you want to say that you have models that can somehow crunch simulations and account for all of the variants associated with football and know all of these human beings with pulses and moods and things like that and figure out that you have some computer system that can tell you that it's got a little bit of a better chance than 50%. I would argue that if that computer program exists, that other people have it. So you really even don't have that much of an edge, even if you think you do. So, I mean, all of this is kind of a pretty, you know, brutal commentary on sports wagering, but that's the reality. Okay. I mean, I, 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 and completely, I mean, it's 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 not even remotely close. That even something like the stock market is much more inefficient than than sport than betting on the NFL. And there's there are reasons for that. We'll get into that some other time. Okay. Um. But it's important to go into this with that knowledge. Is that the chances of all of these teams covering these spreads? is 50 percent in other words that is it's not the, the real number is something else but i don't know what it is okay and nobody does the best estimate is that it's 50 percent so we're in this circuit contest where you have to play five games and this is the imp really important point and i don't know you guys probably know where i'm headed with this but it's important to spend a lot of time hammering this home the winner of the million dollars or the winner of this contest is not being judged by how many, what percent of games he can pick right. You're like, huh? What are, you, what are you talking about? He's not being judged by if he can beat the bookmaker. He's not being judged by if he can do better than 50% against the spread. He's not being judged like if he could do better than, you know, you want to count for the big 55% or 52.3%, uh, 52.7, whatever against, against the spread. The winner is not being judged in that way necessarily. What the winner of this contest is being judged in is whether he can score more points and do better than everybody else in the field. And that is an extremely 
important, the critical point when it comes to playing these types of contests is to realize what you're attempting to do. You're not attempting to make money. You know what I mean? In these games, you're not attempting to say, Chiefs are minus four and a half. I don't think so. I think I think they're they're like five fifty five percent to cover. I'm going to play that. Okay, that's not what this is about. Think of it theoretically. If you made, if you scored, if you got thirty percent of the games correct, okay, and you were betting straight up, you would lose a fortune. But you could theoretically win this contest as long as everybody else did worse. And likewise, if you scored, you know, if you made seventy percent correct predictions you'd make a fortune betting but you might not even get close to the money in this it just depends on how everybody else does this is not a a betting system this is a this is a a contest this is a competition okay now i brought up scores and we're gonna get to that in a minute the way these things get scored is very simple you get one point for a win and half point for a push and zero points for a loss that's it okay so to play this contest, you have to dispense with the idea that you're trying to make money better. Your entire goal in winning this contest is to outperform the competition. So what that means is, is that your goal is very simple. You have every team that you're presuming is 50% to cover. You need to find teams that a majority of this pool are taking and go against them. That's it. That is literally the only thing that you need to do to win this contest. Okay. To win this contest, theoretically. Okay. Listen, the variance has to, you know, the variance has to be on your side, whatever. But in theory, and this is what we're going to accomplish here, what you need to figure out is who everybody's playing and as violently as possible, play the other side. Now, there's one exception, not exception, but there's one little bit of bit of variance to this. That not even variance, but we'll talk about that later when it comes to line movement. But we'll we'll, we'll get to that. I have to have to rem remind myself to talk about that. See how that. Now, again, I played this last year, and I was just really, really bad at it. Okay, I I I would say gave up. I just wasn't really motivated. I, 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 and part of the reason why I'm doing this video now is because it's going to force me to stay focused. And, and, and I promise you that if you stay with me through this entire year, you're going to become just a much smarter wager um, or much smarter thinker. Okay. Uh, beyond that of the NFL. So here's a question. How on earth do you figure out who everybody else is taking? Right. Remember, we're just trying to get leverage on these teams. Like if, if I knew, for example, let's say there are a thousand people in the tournament and, and, and 999 of them are taking the Lions. OK. You'd have to take the Chiefs, right, because you're beginning basically 999 to one odds on a 50 50 proposition. And, and that's the obviously the extreme, but that's what you have to, uh, to accomplish. And as a matter of fact, when we when we talk about results at the end of every week, there are only two things that we're going to talk about. Number one, we are going to, obviously we're going to talk about how we did, right? But we're going to talk about whether we succeeded in getting the leverage that we need, okay? whether it actually came in or not. Like if we if we get five to one leverage on a team and they lost, we're considering that a huge success, okay? Um, so let's talk about this. How do we know in advance who everybody else is taking? Well, there are there's the kind of a, the unfun way to do it. And then I think the, there's the more useful educational way to do it. So then there are a couple of sites that you can look to that can um, that can estimate, I guess, where everybody is playing. Like, so this one, Vegas Insider, like you go to consensus here and it'll show you, you know, who's picking each team. You know, Lions, Chiefs, you know, Panthers, Falcons. Well, this one I have to un unlock. I have to be a subscriber or whatever it is. But but it'll, it'll do that for you. Okay? I'm going to use the Lions, Chiefs one as an example. There's this other one, which is um, 
covers.com and covers.com is another one which will um which will again will rank these teams you know and it says numbers of picks and things like that and then you'll have this other one which is on odd shark uh, odd shark is another one which will talk about consensus and who will take who met how many people are taking each side now one thing about this though is that we don't really know who these people you know, like, like, what is the character of these people? And and more important is, does that even matter? I mean, if, if you get a sample of, of 900 samples, is that good enough to predict what the thousand or so people in Circa are going to pick? You know, are they sharper? You know, are they more, I don't know, do they pick other types of teams than, than here, you know? Are there people who are going to be approaching Circa the same way I am? You know, just, just looking at these sites and trying to fade them. I, I happen to believe that that way too many people are just picking who they like. Okay, I think a very small number relative to what they should be uh, is actually playing this in the appropriate way of playing it like a contest and trying to be contrarian. But there are a handful of those. So we have to we have to we have to respect that and not just blindly go with these consensus sites, you know. Um, but what we are going to do is we'll refer to these, but we're going to use good old fashioned common sense and knowledge of psychology of of wagers and and people that are from the United States of America to figure out, or at least guesstimate, which is the best you can do sometimes, who these, who everybody's gonna be taking. Before we get into that, there are a couple of rules that we have to follow when it comes to playing Circa. Now, again, I've, I've actually just, just one real rule, but, and somebody fought me on this, but I don't care, I'm right, is that you need to beat everybody okay you need to run so hot right that anytime you do not gain on the field you're just getting crushed so what that means is that in my opinion you shouldn't be betting on any game that's a full point in other words if something is not a half you should have no business betting it because any opportunity for a push, if it's a push, I believe everybody involved in that loses. Now, again, you can make the case that it's only half a point and it's the same as, as, as if you won, you know what I mean? Like it, you, you get two pushes the same as a win, but that doesn't matter. You have to beat everybody. Okay. So you need all the outliers. You can't even deal with pushes. You've got to be able to get the wins. So what I'm going to be doing is and again, or who says I'm right? But no spread. Well, not no spread. Most spreads that are solid spreads are probably not going to be candidate plays. The only time it's going to be a candidate play is when there is a extreme consensus to the other side, or if there's a really weird line move thing that we have to. Well, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay. So that's rule number one. You were looking for teams that are half points. Whatever games are half points. So think about this. Think about this for a second. I want you almost have to pause the video and say, what types of teams do people like to play? You know, what, what types of NFL teams do people like to bet on? What types of spots do people like to bet on? Because you have a choice of all these teams. You have a choice of all these games. What is more likely to be a team or a type of team that people like to play. Well, you know what people love to do? They like to play good teams. They do. People feel more comfortable playing good teams. And good is, is relative. You know what I mean? Not good is relative. Good is, good is, I don't want to say subjective, but it, it's sort of objective in a way. Like, that means teams that have a history of winning, teams that have, you know, good coaching Teams that have recognizable quarterback, you know what I mean? Like, like teams that are just win, teams that are just considered good teams, regardless of what the spread says, 
people like to bet on good teams, like the Chiefs. <laughs> people love to bet on the Chiefs. They're a really good team. People love to bet on the Eagles. They love to bet on teams that they, you know what I mean? Like they just bet on good teams. What, what else do people like to play? People love to play teams that are at home. They do. And, and you know what? It, it's, it's, it's psychologically very comforting. When, when you're rooting for a team that's got an 80,000-seat stadium rooting for them, you know, it makes a lot of sense. They, they you know, you, they're not so usually favored, but it just feels a little more, more comfortable to play a team at home, you know? So you have home teams that people, that are pretty good, that are good teams. You know what else people like to play? They like to play favorites. They do. They like to play favorites. It's it's like, even though it's about picking, even though the spread accounts for the fact that they're the better team and their favorite, people just still like to play favorites. You know, they like to play good teams, teams that people have heard of. They like to play favorites. They like to play at home. And and just to further emphasize the the the, the play favorites thing, uh, playing good teams, they love to play teams with good quarterbacks and famous quarterbacks and famous running backs like like the big skill position guys they just love to pl- people just feel comfortable playing those types of things what else what else do people like to play well you know what people love to like to do they love to play and focus in on these key numbers with respect to the nfl so the nfl is made up of most of field goals and touchdowns right and, and, and most of the, of the, you know, point increments are by three or seven, six plus the whatever, plus the extra point. So these key numbers of seven and three are talked about quite a bit in the betting community. And they're talked about in teasers, they're talked about in everything. And these numbers become real focal points. Like it, it's, as far as betting movement goes, it's really tough for a line to move through like three, like if, you know, if, the line open one and a half. If people keep betting between the two and a half, maybe it can get the three. But if they if it gets over three, that's a really big, you know, because that three is a really really big number, and the seven is the same thing. You know, the, the, the line movements kind of just stonewall sometimes at six and a half. It's very difficult to get the seven and over. These numbers are very very critical, and people just love to play teams that are just at that point but not quite over, okay? So teams that are just two and a half point favorites, you know what people think? They say, well, what's the difference? You know, if they're going to win, they're going to, you know, whatever. They're going to win by at least three. So they'll play the two and a half point favorite and they love it, okay? If that line ever got to three and a half, well, we don't want no part of it, okay? But two and a half is considered almost like zero. So people love to play teams that are minus two and a half. On the other hand, if it gets to three and a half, people people are a little more inclined to take the three and a half because people are just convinced it's going to land on three or seven. That's it. Okay. You don't have nothing else. Now it's more likely that it can land on three or seven than anything else, but people really over overcommit to those to those numbers. So three and a half point underdogs, people like to take. Two and a half point favorites, people like to take. And then around that seven point number, that six and a half point number, people love to just bet the favorite, right? Because all I got to do is win by seven. You're not going to have that situation where you win by seven and lose, you know? You're not going to be a 14 and the team gets the backdoor touchdown and you lose. Six and if you give laid to six and a half, you know what you do? You get a touchdown, you know what happens? You're winning. Easy. But when it gets to seven and a half, that's when you can take the underdog because you know what? Take the underdog because the team can score a touchdown and you're still winning. You know? Now, to a certain degree, that also applies to the bigger numbers, but they just don't happen too often. So people are very much more likely to play nine and a half than ten and a half. As far as favorites go. Underdogs more likely to play ten and a half than nine and a half. Fourteen, same thing. Again, it doesn't get these these numbers too often, but thirteen and a half, much more inclined to play Buffalo minus thirteen and a half. Then if I have to lay that extra point. And likewise, if I'm going to take a shot at an underdog, I'd rather play the 14 and a half than the 13 and a half. 
And people overcommit to these numbers, okay? So when we are looking each week for teams to play, what we are looking for are, you know, let's put all this together, we rather not have home teams. We can avoid it. People like home teams. We'd rather not, we'd rather play teams that are not considered good teams. We don't want the good teams. That's what everybody wants. They want the good name teams. We don't really want the favorites. Talk about the favorites, right? Don't really want favorites. People like them. We don't want the home teams. People like them. And we don't want the minus two and a halves. We don't want the minus six and a half if we were going to take a favor, okay? If we were taking underdogs, we wouldn't really want the seven and a half because people like to take them. And we really wouldn't want the three and a half because people like to take them. So what we are looking for, honestly, in a perfect world are either two and a half point underdogs. Well, let's be more specific. Two and a half point road underdogs that have bad teams okay, or not bad teams teams are not considered good preferably against a good team that people are going to be betting on you know what i mean so so this is when you're going to get like double leverage so we can identify there are two things we have to do we have to figure out the team that nobody's playing which is great all right but if you're they're also happen to be playing a team that everybody's playing now or now we're in, in, in leverage nirvana here, okay? So what we're looking for, again, is either the two and a half point underdogs on the road against teams that are perceived as better or six and a half point underdogs on the road, again, against teams that might be considered better. Now, again, if it's also validated by these consensus numbers, that's great too, but... Those are, the, that's kind of like Nirvana. Now you're not going to get those every single week. So it's always kind of a trade-off. You know, sometimes if you have a team that's considered not so great and they're a three and a half point favorite, like on the road, that's pretty good. You know what I mean? Uh, because you want to bet teams on the road. And even though you prefer the underdog, you're a road three and a half point favorite. That's not bad because you know, again, we don't like people don't like three and a half point favorites, like three and a half point underdogs. Okay. So these are kind of the pushes and pulls, and these are kind of the candidate plays that we are going to be looking at when we make these selections. We are not going to give a crap about who we like, not interested in who we like. Can I tell you what to do if you really want to, you know, pick on who you like in sports and bet and bet against the spread? Honestly, pick who you want to root for, really. I mean, honestly, it's really not that big of a deal. You're, you're not going to get a big of an edge over 50%, if at all. Just just pick who you like and, and, and just enjoy it, you know? Th that is not this. Okay? This is really trying to figure out what the hell is going on with the people's the public's perception. So let's take a look at, at, at the card this week, and let's see if we can't, like, put two and two together. And we're going to do this literally every single week. So what we're going to do again, we're going to make our picks. Um, I'm probably going to end up putting in who I say, but it's going to be, you know, it could be line movement, things like that. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the week, for next week, we'll, we'll review who the, uh, what, what happened. I encourage you to go to our Discord channel. I think I'm going to be posting this in the, uh, the sports betting section. Feel free to talk about whatever you want there. Um, the one thing that we have not talked about yet is, is, is line movement, Okay. So let's do that before we get into the pick. Sorry about that. Terrible organization. So these lines come out on Thursdays and they don't move as far as the contest goes. And picks don't lock until Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern. So what happens when Lamar Jackson gets ruled out uh, Thursday at 3.01 p.m.? Okay. Um, what happens? What I'm sorry, not three or one p.m. What happens is it when Lamar Jackson gets ruled out after these lines comes up, comes up, come out? Well, the line is going to move, and you're going to get a situation quite often, but sometimes like violently, 
where a team's line is going to move in reality by three points. But you're going to have a line here that you have to uh, bet on or decide to bet on, which remains at the previous line. So the question is, what do you do with that? You know that it's more likely that the new line is accurate and you're supposed to, you know, just mathematically, if you want to know who's going to win, right, you bet on the team that has the good line value, okay? However, everybody else is going to be doing that. So the question is, is how do you handle that? Do you jump on the leverage that's created? Or do you realize that the leverage is somewhat false if the percent winning chances that the line movement creates just swamps the amount of leverage you're going to get. Now, the, the, the quick answer is it depends, right? It depends on, on the other factors, like what type of team you're talking about. You know, is it a team that people will be tending to pick anyway, you know, and things like that. But in general, I'm kind of at odds on, on that situation because I spoke with Shane, who is a, probably the you know, sharpest sports guy I know. I spoke to him about this last year, and he swears to me that you're just supposed to take the line, the closing line value, eat the chalk, just because the 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 number of picks is actually very small. It's a small sample, you know, five picks times 18 weeks or whatever, that you have to book that win or that theoretical win where possible. Um, the real answer is it depends on on how many people are gonna take the other side because you could do the calculation of what the the, uh, the team's true odds are of winning, given the line value based on the alt lines, um, and then figure out, or at least guess, how many people are going to be taking the other side, and then and then figure it out. When it comes to that, we will deal with that as it comes uh, week to week. Um, so we always have to double check that as we get near our pick. So, But this is the most important part, is to figure out which are the the, the leverageable type plays who are the teams that we think people are going to be taking All right, so let's first let's first look at the consensus let's see what that one's looking like here so um oh this one we have to unlock so let's take a look at this one you have jacksonville 73 percent. you have washington 72 percent. philadelphia 71 percent. minnesota 67 baltimore 65 so let's put a cutoff right here of 64 percent so again, all we're looking for is the, the opposite team. So we're thinking of candidate teams would be Jets, Carolina. I'm writing this down. Actually, I got to do better with the with the presentation of Jets, Carolina, Houston, Tampa, New England, Arizona, Indianapolis. So again, that's that's Jets, Carolina, Houston, Tampa, New England, Arizona, Indianapolis. Again, we're just looking at the consensus picks here. Now we go here, this is the other site. Um, wait, was this the same one? Covers. All right, so this one has, again, we're gonna just try to get the biggest number here. So this one has the Saints at 26%, Falcons, Falcons, and which is, Weird because the other the other side had the uh, the had the Panthers, those probably X out. Then you have the Texans here again. Okay, so that's Houston. I see twice, so they're already a good candidate. The Browns, all right, that wasn't considered on the other side. So the Browns twenty three percent. Indianapolis again. So that's the was that a second Indianapolis? No, it's the first time Indianapolis has showed up. No, the second time. So Houston and Indianapolis are showing up twice. Then you have Pittsburgh. Um, that's the first time they're showing up. Then you have the Cardinals. That's the second time Arizona is showing up. And you have LAC, no. Packers. First time they're showing up. There's New England. That's the second time New England is showing up. And then you have the Rams and the Jets. That's the second time the Jets are showing up. So what we have, we're going to just start with this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So seven candidate teams 
just from just looking at the overall site-wide sites. You know, so again, we're talking about the Jets, Houston, Indianapolis, Arizona, Houston, uh, it's Houston again, so and New England. Okay, so those are the six. So again, Jets, New England, Houston, Indianapolis, and Arizona. So it's five. Once again, New England, Jets, Houston, Indianapolis, Arizona. Now, just so we remember which which these are, let's put these in for now. So let's put in Patriots. And then Jets. And then Indianapolis. And then Arizona. Not Niner, sorry. Oops. I have to confirm. Uh, Arizona. New England, Jets, Houston, Arizona. Okay. So we'll look at these, and then we're going to see what the character of those types of teams are. So we have the Colts, who are a home team, which we don't like. We do like the fact that they're viewed as a bad team. They don't like them. But they're getting four and a half. So it's not really any of those key numbers. So they're not the greatest as far as that goes. Uh, the Cardinals are a push team because they're at seven. We don't probably want to play them. The Patriots, they're a home team at four. So they're not, that's not the greatest. The Jets, they're home. So we don't like that. But they're only plus two, which is good. And they're against a team they're still perceived as bad, the Jets, and they're against a team that's really perceived as good. Okay? So we have a couple of things going for us. We have a good not, We The only thing we don't have is that half point. Okay? So there's nothing based on the consensus plays that covers everything. And you're not going to see a lot that covers everything. Okay? So let's see if we can forget the consensus and just go through these game by game here. So you have Chiefs. They're at home, minus four and a half. Um, you have the Lions on the road. We like that. Plus four and a half. It's not quite at six and a half, but it's not bad. And they're certainly not perceived as the better team. So Lions is actually pretty good. Um, you have Panthers plus three and a half. We don't take plus three and a half point underdogs. Uh, Ravens. Tech Texans, it's right on the tough number. It's like a push number. We have the Browns, home dog, two and a half. We don't really like that too much. The Colts, home dog, plus four and a half. Not the greatest. This one's close. So you have the Vikings, five and a half point favorite against the Buccaneers. The Buccaneers lost Brady. Um they're they are viewed as 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 much weaker. They're on the road. They're not getting six and a half, but five and a half is getting close. So I think that so far the Lions and the Bucks are probably probably good plays. Um, so far on the given alternatives, Saints three point line we don't do that. Uh, Niners two and a half points. Uh, on the road. Steelers would probably be the play, but I don't know. I don't see much of an edge here. Commanders minus seven against seven is a key point. So this one's interesting. So Bears are minus only one against the Packers, right? Who lost Rodgers. So the Packers are going to be perceived as a bad team. They're on the road. They're only getting one. Okay. Uh, two and a half would be better, but they're only getting one. So that looks pretty good. So, so far we have Lions, Bucks, Packers. Let's see here. Broncos three and a half point home favor. We, that's never going to work for us because people like playing home teams, but uh, the three and a half people like the underdogs. So probably going to be nothing there. Chargers three points right on the number. Eagles once again. Patriots. Ah, uh, the four is tough because people like to take the four. People like to play the Patriots in general. They're at home, not really. Seahawks minus five and a half at home against the Rams, who are gonna are considered pretty bad this year, you know. And 
They're on the road. They're getting only five and a half. So it's not six and a half, but it's pretty close. I think this is a very good candidate play. So you have so far Lions, Bucks, Packers, Rams. Then you have Bills, Giants right on the number. And then you have the Jets. Now, here's the kind of the, the good little, um, whatchamacallit, the good um, a sanity check. If you look at these five, you know anything about the NFL, and you look at these five teams, and you feel as though that they are just atrocious looking bets, then that's probably just what you want. Okay. If it goes against everything that you think of when you think of what should be good bets, they're probably good because other people are probably on the other side. Okay. Um, and this is the analysis that we are going to use pretty much every single week. Now, who am I going to actually end up taking? You know, because I, I would have preferred to have gotten to some of these teams that the consensus groups were also on as being low owned. Um, but the Texans, I don't think I can do because that 10 points, I mean, I just, I don't know if I can deal with that. Um, oh, this is going to be the one that I might have to go for the push game because just so few people are on Texans. They become a pretty good candidate play here. Uh, Saints time is not a really big deal. And the other one that I might have to go on are the Cardinals. Because the Cardinals are considered hopeless. Kyler Murray's out for the season. Commanders had good momentum from last season. And the people are saying the Cardinals could go, oh, and whatever. But the, it's right on that push number, which is really annoying. Okay. So these are my candidate plays. Okay. It's going to be Lions plus four and a half. The only thing that concerns me at this one is that um, – is well, Kelsey is out, and I don't know if everybody's going to be taking the Chiefs as a result. So I don't know if I'm going to be getting the double leverage there. So it's going to be five of those seven plays. I'm not sure what they're going to be yet. I do have to decide on this Lions game before tonight's over. But that's the analysis, and this is what we're going to do literally every single week: is go through these checkpoints, go through these key numbers, go through these ideas of what we think people are going to be doing and fade them. And again, the way we're going to analyze our results is yes, how we do, but also what type of leverage we actually got. Okay. Did we play a team that nobody played? Or even better, did we play a team against people that a lot of people played? It's going to be a fun exercise for the whole course of the whole season. And the cool thing about it being quarterly is that you can, um, you know, if you, if you don't do well the first couple of weeks, you're not done. You continue to get paid on other, other weeks, on other quarters. Uh, that will do it. Uh, I'm sorry if this is not what you were expecting, but this is the way I look at these types of contests, and we're going to see what happens. Good luck.